All right, guys, today we're going to talk about dogs. So if you are a dog person, get ready for some cute photos. If you're not a dog person, get on the bandwagon. All right, so here we have dogs. Dogs are all the same species, but look at that diversity, right? We have so many different types of dogs. St. Bernard's, Greyhounds, Little Chihuahuas, Pugs, Boxers, Poodles, you name it. Okay, but all of dogs have the same common ancestor, and that is Canis lupus, the gray wolf. Now, the gray wolf, you can see, looks a lot like a dog. In fact, dogs and wolves can still breed and have babies, hence your wolf-dog hybrids. Some people have those as pets. They're a little bit dangerous to have as pets, though. They're a lot more volatile, meaning they can react really quickly to things. They are large. They can be dangerous just because of their size and aggressive nature. So they're different than actual dogs, those wolf-dog hybrids. But a lot of dogs actually look a lot like wolves, even if they're not half wolf, right? We've got the Tamascan, which looks a lot like a wolf, the Czech wolf dog. We've got Huskies. We've got a lot of breeds that look a lot like that common ancestor. However, we also have breeds that look a lot different, okay? If I look at a mini dachshund, I'm not thinking wolf. If I look at a toy poodle, not thinking wolf. Okay, so how did we get there? Well, they think that when humans were first starting to have villages, um, there were areas where scrap foods were left, right? Like a little town dump, if you think of it that way. And wolves that were in the area may have started eating those scraps of food. Wolves are scavengers as well as predators. And they think that the wolves that were eating that food, wolves that were less scared of humans, meaning they maybe lingered a little bit longer, those wolves had an advantage and survived and reproduced other wolves that were less scared of humans. And over time, wolves that kind of were friendly with the humans had an advantage because they were able to eat more food scraps and survive and have more offspring. Okay, so if we look at this, there are four different observations um, and four different things that probably led to the domestication of dogs. First off, we have to understand that in every species, there is usually overproduction, meaning not all of the offspring will survive to adulthood. So in wolves, not all pups are going to survive. And that is because there is a struggle for existence, predation, disease, competition for food. If there's a limited food supply, though, and you have some wolf pups who are kind of a friendlying up to the humans and getting some scraps, they're going to have more food and have an advantage. Okay, so the second big thing, overproduction, not all pups survive. Number two, there is variation within those pups. Um, and that variation might mean that some of these pups are scared of humans and run off and don't get extra food scraps, while some might be a little bit more expressive in their facial muscles and the humans are like, oh, that, that wolf seems nice. I'm going to give him some food. And that pup might survive. Okay, so certain traits might make individuals more likely to survive and reproduce. Say you're just an abnormally cute wolf pup who is slightly less aggressive or fearful. Those traits would allow you to eat more food and reproduce more. And then over time, we have adaptation, meaning the individuals with those traits survive and reproduce. That trait is passed on and becomes more common in the population. And over many, many, many years, we now have dogs that are a lot like wolves, but their behavior and their traits are a lot different because those certain behaviors and traits that made them friendly were selected for over thousands of years. Now, the wolf to dog transition may have actually been an example of the wolves themselves eating near humans, right? And then the ones that were less fearful, having more babies and surviving more. So it was a natural selection for those traits. However, humans themselves, once dogs were in our realm, you know, and once we had dogs, started artificially selecting for certain traits. So traits that normally would not give a dog a better reproductive advantage, like smallness, Humans started saying, you know, I really want a small poodle, so I'm going to take the smallest poodle in the litter, and I'm going to have that small poodle 
make love to another small poodle and we're going to create some even smaller poodles and then we're going to take the smallest of that litter and we're going to breed that smallest poodle with another really small poodle until we can fit our poodles in our purses oh boy <laughs> so we get teacup poodles right teeny little poodles I thought this was funny. The wolf says, I'm cold, hungry, tired of hunting. Maybe I'll ask the humans for some scraps. What's the worst that could happen? Well, became a tea, teacup poodle. All right. So this is what we call artificial selection. We have a wolf. Maybe they become more friendly with the humans. We've got uh, somewhere in the transition between wolf to dog. And then humans start artificially selecting for traits that they want. Maybe they want a dog that is a good companion for hunting. They might select for certain traits that make them a good hunting dog. Um, they could also select for traits that make the dogs guard dogs and fighters, right? Different traits would be selected for for different reasons and uses. So artificial selection is the intentional selection and reproduction of individuals in a population that have desirable traits. Please write that down. And notice for Great Danes, for instance, we would select the large traits in organisms that reproduce sexually, like dogs, two adults that are big, we would choose to have them reproduce together and get tall dog babies. This is very similar to natural selection, okay? So natural selection, the same process happens in nature. Instead of humans being that selective agent, the person that chooses which dogs get to reproduce, natural events cause certain individuals to have a reproductive advantage, right? So individuals with a certain trait would be more likely to survive and pass on that trait to their offspring, okay? That is the main Thing I want you to get from this video. Okay, certain traits give individuals advantages, those individuals reproduce and pass on that advantage. Just as a funny last thing, I want you to answer this uh, lovely multiple choice. So, what do you think uh, the dachshund, the sausage dog, was selectively bred for based on the traits that you see in the picture? All right, bye.